If you've ever wondered how a vinyl record is made, you're in luck. We visited Microforum Vinyl Pressing to talk with... This is Noble Musa. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at uh, Microforum Manufacturing. So Noble, how does it all start? Uh, the first step is to make sure that you have the correct files. Uh, the most important thing is uh, to have a high quality, high res, as high res as possible file. Uh, an MP3 won't cut it. The files that you use for streaming you usually won't cut it. You need 24-bit, 96 uh, kilohertz uh, wave file. Oftentimes, we'll receive an audio file that obviously isn't to spec, and uh, uh, the lacquer uh, engineer will review it and uh, point out if there are any shortcomings in the audio or if it needs some adjusting. There's an opportunity there to resubmit files, or we can uh, quote to have the fixes done uh, for you. Yeah. So the, the audio file, once it's approved and ready to go, gets, gets cut. Uh, directly into the disc. And there's an actual cutting head uh, that's uh, attached to a playback system. So the, the playback system sends the electronic signal to the uh, cutting head, and the cutting head actually physically cuts, it's got a sapphire tip on it, and physically cuts the grooves into that master record. So you have an actual physical record So once the lacquers are cut, they go through a process called galvanics, and that starts with a, a silver spray. So the actual lacquer is mounted uh, onto a unit where it's sprayed by robot directly onto the lacquer disc and is prepared for the electroplating process. And when we say electroplating, it's exactly that. It, you're actually plating using electrolysis. This uh, silvered lacquer is placed in a bath and then during a chemical process, the nickel builds up on it and it fills the grooves and it creates an image of that lacquer. So that image of that lacquer is what we use to go on press. And there's actually uh, different options there too. You, you have one step, two step, and three step options. If you're only doing one step, you really don't have a backup. If you're doing a two step, you have a backup for the stampers. And then if you have a three step, you have a backup of the backup. So once we have the galvanics completed and you have your stampers ready to go on the press, our operator will load the side A and side B onto the press. We'll put the pellets into the hopper and the hopper feeds uh, what's called an extruder and the pellets get heated up as they move up through the extruder into the press and they'll fill up uh, what's, a, there's a cavity that looks almost like a biscuit and that biscuit gets uh, pushed into the, uh, the part of the press that applies the pressure and the heat. But before that happens, or at the same time as that's happening, the labels get uh, placed on the top and the bottom. They're actually not labels. They don't have adhesive on them. They just get fused in this process. So with the intense heat and the, and the pressure, the, uh, the paper, uh, which become the labels, get fused to the record and get squished and formed into the stampers for the side A and B. So as soon as the, uh, the machine releases the record and all that heat and the pressure fills all the grooves, it's pushed out and it's the excess, and you want excess, because that means you're filling all the grooves on the outside of the record. If you're not getting a good you know, excess trim, that means you're not filling the grooves. And then the trimmer would circle around the record and, and trim off that excess and then the record gets picked up and uh, put over into the uh, cooling station of the, the machine where it's left to cool while the re next record is being inserted. And the process repeats itself. It takes about 30 seconds uh, for the record to get uh, pressed with the labels and, and reach the cooling station. And while the, uh, the record is trimming, then the next biscuit for the next record is coming up. Uh, the excess trim is actually taken over to uh, our recycling room and ground up, vacuumed and prepared. It can be reused in records again. When you order a test press, and most, most orders do have a test press associated with them, it is possible to waive the test press because there's certain things that you can look for. And the test press is actually the same thing as the final pressing. We use the same stampers, it's the same process, we uh, mark the heat settings and the pressure settings, and it goes through the whole process, and those records, usually five to 10, 
uh, records are sent to the client for review and approval. Uh, and the customer will, uh, you know, should play every record that we send and look for uh, issues, uh, whether it could be the lacquer cutter, it could be issues in galvanics, uh, if you hear any strange noises or uh, pops that are in the same location on all the records, that indicates a potential problem. And you would tell us and we would go check the mothers or the stampers to see if that issue is on there as well. Uh, so it's, it's important to review the, the test pressings uh, that you ordered, uh, not just say, hey, they look great physically, let's approve them. <laughs> The quality control process uh, at the plant uh, is multi-stage. Uh, we actually record uh, the mothers or the stampers. Uh, so we have a file, an electronic file for reference uh, for our QC department. Uh, and it's numbered with the job number and it's filed in the docket. When the records are being pressed, whether it's the test press or the final run after the approval of the test press, every 20 or so records are listened to by our QC person who's in the actual manufacturing room in a separate enclosed uh, soundproof barrier. Uh, so they have their, their, their QC person has their room to listen uh, with headphones and, and is actually listening to the records as they're being pressed. Approximately one in every 20 records. While the record pressing is happening, there are other things in production as well. Uh, so if you've ordered a vinyl uh, record jacket, or the labels are being manufactured on press as well. These, these are done at the same time as the whole record process is being done. And uh, the first thing that gets done is, uh, it's determined first by quantity what press it goes on. We have digital capabilities for short runs and we have offset for the larger runs. The jacket gets printed on sheets. Those sheets actually be, get die cut first and die cutting is just like a giant cookie cutter for paper. So you have the flat sheets that are printed and they're actually punched out into the shape of the jacket. And then from there, they go into the gluing process where they're, the machine will fold and glue and, and you, that's where you get the finished jacket. We want to send a huge thanks to Noble and everybody at Microform for letting us hang around for the day. We have a couple more bits with Noble that you may find interesting, so click down below to see those. And to know whenever a new video hits our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.